In this lesson, we're going to be talking about scientific notation and significant figures. So let me ask you a question. Well, you're probably wondering this yourself. Why do we use scientific notation? Huh, that's a great question. So how many molecules are in one cubic centimeter of the air you're breathing in right now? Seriously, think about it. How many molecules are in one cubic centimeter of the air you're breathing in right now? Are we talking like a hundred? A thousand? What about like a million? The answer might actually surprise you. So this gigantic number that you see right here is actually how many molecules are in one cubic centimeter of the air you're breathing in right now. So let's try to figure out what this number is. Well, let's see, these are the hundreds. Then we have thousands, millions, billions, trillions, and then we still have numbers left over. This is a really big number. So when we rewrite this in scientific notation, we write this as 2.7 times 10 to the 19. If you were to plug that into your calculator, it would come out to the same number as what you see up above it. But this is a much easier way for us to represent that number. Not only is it easier to say, but it's also a lot easier to enter that number into our calculator. So in science, we deal with a lot of really big numbers. So we use scientific notation. Okay. So here are the rules for writing out scientific notation. First of all, it's always written as a power of 10. So if you notice on that previous example, that number was written times 10 to a certain power. So it's always written as a power of 10. The decimal always goes after the first non-zero number. So in our number here, 5,438, the first non-zero number from left to right is this five. So the decimal goes after that five. We move the decimal place one, two, three places. So that's why we end up with times 10 to the third. A negative exponent means the number is less than one. So in math, you probably learned these exponents if you learn scientific notation, as moving the decimal place to the left or the right. If you see a negative number, that means we're moving the decimal place to the left. So in this example, we had 1.0 times 10 to the negative third. We're moving that decimal place to the left three times. One, two, three. In this final example, or this final rule rather, it says a positive exponent means the number is greater than one. So in this case, we're moving the decimal to the right. So instead of moving it to the left three places, we're gonna move it to the right three places. One, two, three. And that's how we end up with 1,000. All right, let's do an example. It says convert 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 7, 1, 2 to scientific notation. Our first step is going to be to identify the first non-zero number, 7. So going from left to right, we want to find the first number that's between 1 and 9. And that would be our 7 right here. Next, let's count how many places we have to move our decimal to end up with a number between 1 and 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, if I put the decimal place right here, I have 7.12. That number is between 1 and 9. If I were to move the decimal place one more place to the right, I would have 71.2, which would be larger than 9. So we're good here. So when we write this out, it's going to be 7. 0.12. I include all the numbers after the 7, and then I'm going to write out times 10. And then how many times did I move the decimal place? 
one, two, three, four, five, six. 7.12 times 10. This number is less than one, so this will be minus six. Let's do another example. In this example, we're gonna take scientific notation and go the other way. We're gonna convert this to standard notation. So let's do this first. Let's write out 8.1. And then since this number is uh, times 10 to the positive six, I'm gonna add a bunch of zeros after. You'll see why here in a minute. So because it's a positive exponent times 10 to the positive six, I know that I'm moving my decimal place to the right. I'm going to move it six times to the right. The reason I added the zeros is so you can see where I'm placing the decimal. So let's move it to the right six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's place our decimal point right here. Now, if I were to rewrite this number, eight, one, zero, 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 zero. Let's throw some commas in there for some context. So that would be what? 8,100,000. So this would be our number rewritten in standard notation. All right, next let's talk about significant figures. Significant figures indicate how precise a number is. So if you look at the balance that is shown in the picture here, the number on the balance reads 2.65. So the precision of our balance is to the hundredths place. So instead of just writing out the number two or three, I would write out everything because my balance is telling me exactly um, what that piece of uh, filter paper weighs or what the mass of that filter paper is to the hundredths place. So it's 2.65. That's how precise our equipment is. If I just wrote down two or three, that's not actually the precision of our equipment. So we want to include all those numbers because they all matter here. So here are the rules. There are a total of six rules for significant figures. The first one, sig figs do not matter for conversion factors. We will come back to this one when we get into conversions and stoichiometry. But for right now, just know that these numbers don't matter for conversion factors. All right, the first rule, well, really the second rule, but it's the first one that really matters for right now. All non-zero numbers, so numbers, digits, one through nine, are significant. So in the first example, we have one, two, three non-zero numbers. All three of those numbers matter. In the second example, we have two, four. Both of those are non-zero numbers, so we have two sig figs. So any number you see that is not a zero is significant. The next rule says zeros between non-zero numbers are significant. So I call this the sandwiched rule. Sandwich. Any zero you see sandwiched between two non-zero numbers are significant. So in the first example, we have a five and a nine. Those are both non-zero numbers. That zero between the five and the nine counts as a significant digit because it's between the five and the nine. So in this case, we would have three sig figs. In the second example, we have one and four as our non-zero numbers. And then we have these three zeros that are sandwiched between. So those zeros would count in this case. So we would have a total of five significant digits. So you'll see next why zeros don't always count. So the first one is leading zeros. Leading zeros are never significant. So if I told you, oh man, I'm going to give you a ton of money. There's going to be a lot of zeros in this number. If I gave you this much money, look at all these zeros, right? Oh, 
you wouldn't really be as excited as if I gave you this much money. There's a big difference. Those zeros in front don't matter. You could write a million of them and they wouldn't matter. The only number that matters is that first non-zero number. And the same is true when we write out uh, any number in signs. So leading zeros are never significant. So in this first example, the only two numbers that matter are the seven and the five. The point zero 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 seven five. These zeros in front don't matter. They don't count. So we only have two significant figures here. The 7.5 times 10 to the negative 5 is the exact same number. It's just written as scientific notation. So this negative 5 indicates how many zeros are in front. They don't really matter. The only two numbers that matter are still the 7 and the 5. All right, trailing zeros, which are numbers after a decimal, are significant. So if you think back to our balance, if we had a number, uh, if we were reading number on our equipment and our equipment said it was 4.50, that zero matters because our equipment is precise to that hundredths place. So in this case, the zero does count. It's called a trailing zero. So numbers, there's zeros after non-zero numbers are significant. So not only do the four and the five count, but that trailing zero also counts. Now, this is important right here. This is after a decimal. In the second example, same thing. So we have these zeros in front. Those are leading zeros. Those don't count. And then we have a two. We have a sandwiched zero. We have a three. And then we have this trailing zero right here. So that is how we got four significant figures. Remember, those zeros in front don't count. Now, in this final uh, rule, when we don't have a decimal, trailing zeros are not significant. So in this first example, notice there's no decimal place. So the only two numbers that matter are the one and the two. In the final example, we have three zeros, no decimal point. So the only number that matters is that first one. All right, let's review. So here are four examples. Let's figure out how many significant numbers are in each case. So obviously, the twos matter because they're non-zero numbers. This zero in the middle counts because it's a sandwiched number, a sandwiched zero, I should say. So that one counts. Now does this final zero count? Does this one count right here? Well, I don't see a decimal place, so this one would not count. So there would be three significant figures in this case. So let's look at B. B is pretty much the same thing, except we have a decimal. So we have our two zeros, or sorry, we have our two twos right there, and then we have a sandwiched zero. So we have three. Now in this case, because we have a decimal place, this zero also counts. So we would have four significant figures in this case. All right. In this final example, we know that these first, sorry, in these third example, we know these first four numbers are significant, but what about this zero right here? Well, that would be a trailing zero after a decimal point. So in this case, this number does count. So there would be five significant figures here. All right, this last one is a doozy. So we have our non-zero numbers here. So those two numbers are gonna count. We have a sandwich zero here, that counts. The zero in front doesn't count, it's a leading zero. The zero at the end, just like the first example, the zero doesn't count because there isn't a decimal place, so there would be three significant figures in this case. And that, in a nutshell, are the significant figure rules.